recording is to provide a document that documents the meeting that occurred in an online format. So unlike state government, local government is entirely essential and does not close and does not stop providing critical services. As long as this pandemic goes on, local government will be serving the community, meeting critical EMS needs while maintaining roads, trash, water, and sewer services. Local government is adapting and this meeting is no exception to a new way of doing business in a social distancing environment. With the governor's orders, large assemblies have still been outlawed from this emergency statewide uh, measures to include public meetings. However, second class township code requires us to meet and the Sunshine Act requires those meetings to be in public. To meet all three of these somewhat conflicting rules, we are conducting a virtual public meeting with the best technology available short notice. We feel we are doing our best to comply with all the governor's orders while still complying with existing law that never anticipated a pandemic. Tonight's meeting has been advertised and will be held online using Zoom with a login and call-in information posted on our website. If you're calling into the meeting, I'd like to encourage you to remain on the call, but to also go to the Township website by Googling East Hemphill Township and to log into our Zoom meeting following the instructions on our home webpage. Tonight's meeting and audio is also being recorded. Also messages sent via Zoom's chat section will be read in the meeting and a log saved to be archived with the video. Both will be made available on our website after the meeting. For tonight's meeting, Robert's rules will still apply and the meeting will be run by the chairman who will serve as a host of the Zoom site assisted by the township manager. Everyone other than the manager and the chairman will have their microphones muted in order for the audio to be heard clearly. Many people speaking at the same time combined with background noise make meetings like this impossible to hear. During the meeting, only one person speaks at a time and they must be recognized by the chairman. For supervisors, staff, and for our guests that are here to present tonight on the agenda, you will need to unmute your microphone to speak when acknowledged and will need to remute your microphone when done speaking or if instructed by the chairman. The steps to speak for staff, supervisors, and presenters are simple. Unmute your microphone, request recognition by the chairman, after re receiving recognition, speak, and when done speaking, mute your microphone. Residents and business owner comments received ahead of the meeting will be read during public comment or before an applicable action is taken on an agenda item. The resident can also participate in the meeting using the Zoom chat function. Messages received from residents during the meeting from chat will be read aloud just like asking a question. No verbal questions or statements will be accepted during the meeting from residents and businesses only chat messages. All messages must include a name and a street address as required for public comment in order to be read aloud. Again, as a resident to participate in the meeting, if you're calling in, you must Google the East Hemphill Township website and log into our Zoom meeting that's listed on our homepage. You may select to remain on your phone while now also having video access to the meeting. The chat button is on the bottom right of the Zoom screen. Simply select it and type your comments or questions. To repeat, no verbal questions or statements will be accepted during the meeting from residents and businesses, only chat messages. Any violation of the mentioned rules will be deemed to be acting out of order and your microphone will be muted immediately without warning. Continued violations will result in you being electronically removed from the meeting. All voting tonight will be done by roll call vote to ensure all votes are properly accounted for. Roll call will be conducted by the township manager. There will be no action taken on any non-agenda items of a non-emergency, non-urgent nature that arise during the meeting. All such items will be referred to staff and will be handled at a later meeting. It is East Hemphill's attention to continue meeting during the pandemic as required by law when there is agenda items requiring action, which is common to almost all meetings. You will utilize this hybrid online meeting format for the time being until such time the government lists the prohibition for public gatherings we are permitted to meet as we are accustomed to. Thank you for your patience and understanding as we strive to continue serving the residents and businesses of this township while fully complying with the social distancing requirements prescribed by our governor. So with that, um, our next step would be to, to conduct a moment of silence. So we will conduct a moment of silence. 
you know, next step would normally be to conduct a Pledge of Allegiance, but what I'd just like to encourage everybody to do is through the pandemic to fly their flag every day in front of the property as a show of support for the first responders and the medical providers there caring for our community. So with that now, we'll move on to our consent agenda. The purpose of the consent agenda is to approve routine and typical items that usually require very little debate or discussion. So with that, I will open it up to the floor with the board about the consent agenda. Okay, I'm seeing nothing from any supervisors, so I'm seeing none comments from that. So I will entertain a motion to adopt the consent agenda. So moved. Okay, motion from Mr. Bennett. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Lefevre. Mrs. Schweitzer, can you roll call the vote, please? Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. So it looks like the ayes have it, five to nothing. Now we'll move on to action items and we got development services and the first item up is the Penn State Hospital and it's an overall discussion for three motions about the building permit, a time extension for the building permit uh, with the additional 180 days and about the community contributions. Mrs. Schweitzer, I'll turn it over to you first and then we do have representatives from Penn State to make a presentation. So I provided the board with a very brief memo as with a little bit of history and kind of where we stand now. And I just want to briefly review that we had a negotiating team that worked with Penn State, Alan Brightbill and Todd Lord uh, for several months. The Penn State's latest proposal is agreeable to the team and we are presenting it to the entire board to determine consensus. I just wanted to point out some positive things that Penn State Hospital will be bringing to the township as part of this package. They are sharing in the cost of the Soir Run Restoration Project, which brings significant MS4 stormwater credits to the township at a significant savings to our residents. They're also sharing in the cost of the state road realignment, the bridge replacement, and the traffic signal, which will provide again tax dollar savings for our residents. Temporary construction jobs as they build the hospital, medical office building, and the parking garage will be realized in the township. The permanent job base when the hospital, medical office building are complete is very significant for the township. The convenience to East Hanfield Township residents of having a local hospital facility in the township is definitely a benefit. And lastly, a long-term community partner the partnership that we're creating here. The proposal that Penn State has presented to us, like Mr. Russell indicated, is, comes in three parts. The, uh, based upon the anticipated reasonable and direct costs of the township, a combined building permit fee of $750,000, which will include the hospital, medical office building, and parking garage, all on the west side of State Road, has been determined and currently before you. In addition, they are requesting an 180 or 18 month extension of the building permit process under the UCC code. And lastly, they are offering us a community support annual contribution with an initial payment of $170,000 per year for the first five years. Thank you, Ms. Schweitzer. Uh, Mr. Stanley, is there anything that on the Penn State side you guys would like to offer? Now, I believe your manager has outlined um, the three components. The one thing uh, that I would like to add up front with respect to the building permit fee is that the total fee of $750,000 will be paid up front in connection with the first permit being sought uh, by Penn State Health um, for uh, the hospital project. So that full, full negotiated uh, fee of $750,000 would be paid up front uh, in connection with the first permit and would then be applicable to the two remaining permits as we move forward. 
the, the time extension uh, for a point of clarification, uh, we're looking for a full 18 months to commence construction, uh, which primarily is a result of COVID-19 and, and some of the complications that not only the health industry has experienced, but all other industries are experiencing. Um, and the third uh, would be the uh, $170,000 per year payment, first payment being made six months uh, after the issuance of the certificate of use and occupancy for the hospital project. And for the second motion, the, the, the extension, the motion is a one year extension, which give you 18 months total time. Correct. I, it, it, I just wanted to clarify that for the record. I think uh, the COVID-19 has impacted most construction at this point. So a lot of construction schedules right now are slipping. Okay, so do you have anything more? Anybody else in your team wants to talk at this point? Or, or is that I will open it up to the board if the answer's no? Uh, no, and, and be glad if you'd open it up to the board if there's any questions, as you indicated, there are separate, several representatives, including uh, Alan Breckbill, Todd Lord, and Mike O'Brien and, and my colleague, uh, Claudia Shank, to answer any questions you have. And we would then ask for a positive action uh, by the board with respect to each of the three requests. Okay. So with that, we will open up to board members. I just need you to unmute and get acknowledgement and then you can speak. Just, just a quick question on the time extension. This uh, extra year, is this for the total project or just the project on the west side of State Road? The, uh, the one-year extension would be for the initial permit, that being the permit for the hospital component. Um, each individual permit after that uh, would be subject to the time limitations and time periods under the construction code, which initially provides for 180 days. And so the one year extension solely is for the hospital project uh, as one of the three components. Okay, great. Thank you. And, um, you know, I, I for one, am very pleased to see that this is a 750,000 payment dollar payment up, up front. I think that's, uh, that's great. And, you know, and again, recognizing that the stress that this, uh, has put on all healthcare systems throughout the country. Uh, you know, it's quite a vote of confidence, I think, in, uh, in that state and, and uh, what we can do from a East Hempfield standpoint. So I appreciate that. Looks like, thank you, Mr. Ben. Mr. Lefevre, looks like you were trying to hop in there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, I'm addressing the Potential for a 545 day, if I've done the math correctly, possibility for the start of construction. A casual glance as I pass the site today appears that the building pad is prepared and it appeared to be some equipment that might be approaching a foundation effort. So I'm just kind of wondering what understanding we have on commencement of construction. Uh, I can, this is Alan Brackwell, I can uh, respond to that. Yeah, it's our intent to keep moving with the project. We're just trying to give ourselves, uh, based on COVID, I guess some flexibility. You never know if we think there should be a design change or that sort of thing, given COVID. But you're right, the pro we've done a lot of site preparation uh, to move this project forward. You're absolutely right. It appeared that possibly there was some additional rock exploration or something to that effect going on today from my experience. And of course, I understand if that's for design clarification, that's fine. I just didn't know if a start of construction is identified as something other than foundation work. I think uh, I would ask my colleague, uh, Todd Lord, to comment on some of the, what's, I, I'm not sure exactly what was done today. Todd, would you have more knowledge than I have? And Todd, if you can hear me, 
we're not hearing you, so I don't know if you're on uh, mute or not. This is Mike O'Brien. Um, I can comment on what's being done presently is um, strictly, and it's not our project specifically, but we're out there almost every day, just given our involvement on the east side. Uh, there has been, as Alan indicated, all the site work necessary to start um, uh, in preparing for vertical construction. And at this point, that has not begun. And there is um, currently a submission into the township for an approval of the foundation plan and for, um, and for the rest of the project as well, and that being specifically the hospital. So there has not been any vertical construction that has begun at this point. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And, and I have one other question, and this came up in, in one of the communications that we had from, uh, from Penn State con, uh, concerning uh, the fire suppression system at the hospital. Is, is there anything unique to the inspection and approval uh, process in a hospital fire suppression system that you wouldn't that would be substantially different than in a building somewhere another type of building that, that might add some cost to the question Again, I would be, I'd be, it would be my preference if Todd could respond. I think he was having some difficulty. I think he, he sent me a note. He just got bounced off. Todd, can you hear again? He's not muted right now. So. Okay. okay. I mean, I, well, I can, uh, Tom, Tom, I can address that. There's, um, there's a requirement to have um, two um, mains that come into the site. And that is, that is what we pursued, or say we, the, the hospital has pursued for the site. And that is the only unique element to this that I'm aware of, that there's, uh, there are two laterals feeding, um, feeding the water supply in case one lateral were to go down. It's a redundancy to ensure uh, consistent water flow for the hospital. Okay. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions of the board? Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Yes, Mr. Wigglesworth. Um, on the, the community donation, I know there was some back and forth and discussion about possibly um, including some language there at the end that would, would um, require a good faith negotiation at the end that would at the very least cover the costs of the township uh, at the end of the five years. Uh, has there been any thought to adding that? And that question is directed to Penn State at this point? Yes. Um, Penn State um, is, is, is willing and has, I think in discussions with your manager indicated that uh, at the end of the, prior to the expiration of the five year period, we will enter into good faith negotiations regarding future payments to the township. Um, but, you know, if anything, if COVID-19 has taught us anything, we just need to look at uh, where we are at a certain situation. Um, Penn State Health is uh, uh, agreeing to contribute the 170 for five years and uh, committed to entering into good faith negotiations with the township prior to the expiration of the five year period regarding payments moving forward. This is, this is Alan Breckel. I would just uh, amplify saying that's, that's the case. We're very willing to enter into negotiations. That's our intent. Is there a way to include some language to, I mean, I'm not looking for this to go on in perpetuity and I don't view as a golden goose, as I've stated before. Um, but there will be a different board 
five, six years from now, 10 years from now, they're gonna to have to deal with other challenges, um, other costs associated. Is there a willingness to um, agree that there's going to be some type of um, community donation going forward at the end of this? Mr. Wigglesworth, as an institution, I think we're ready to commit to the payments that have been made, plus to commit uh, to enter into good faith negotiations with the township uh, prior to the expiration. But as a institution, just as Penn State Health is, uh, we can't uh, look into the future uh, and make a commitment um, regarding that other than to say, um, the relationship that we have with the township, uh, the uh, commitment we have uh, in moving forward with the uh, project that is proposed, uh, will be a community member in the future uh, and will uh, discuss uh, prior to the expiration of that five-year term uh, how we roll the, the next term uh, and what uh, commitment we're willing to make at that time. So at this point, if I understand correctly, you're not willing to make a, a commitment of any kind at the end of the five years? No, I, I think you're, um, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we're willing to commit to the township to enter into discussions regarding future payments after the initial five-year term. I guess what I'm what I would say to the board or where I would I guess where my concern is and just again we just got this today so um, I mean it's tough to take a look at all this comprehend it all in one day and make a move on it. I do have a concern with that um, again I don't I'm not looking to um, make an unreasonable request, but I don't think it's unreasonable to request that there's an acknowledgement that there's going to be some payment made going forward. Um, I don't think that's unreasonable. What and, and how much that will be can be left up to negotiations at a further time. That's all I have on it. Okay, more discussion of the board. Um, sort of a middle ground on that. Would, it, would there be a um, possibility that we could just get a commitment to a payment in the future negotiated five years out? Mr. Bank, can you restate that again? You broke up in the middle of your talk right there. Perhaps could we get a, 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 an agreement that that there will be a payment in a sixth year, a seventh year, an eighth year, and that really what we would be negotiating would be the amount of that payment. That might be that might that could be an option. And I guess then the other thing I would say is that all of this is going to be eventually, I would assume condensed into a, an agreement between the township and Penn State, a, a formal agreement, correct? On my end, that's my understanding is this will lead to a formal agreement. I can confirm that. As a point of reference, with the delay, possibly with COVID, the project may only be ready to open the doors for service in five years. And so we'd be looking at a scenario at that time where all those things would need to be considered. Why is your uh, construction schedule assuming there were no COVID delays right now? We had originally, I think, stated that 
Uh, this is not exact, but I think tentatively we're talking about the, and Todd could correct me if I'm wrong, the summer or fall of 2022, if there were no delays. That was our tentative time frame. That the hospital would be completed. Okay. Is that, I think, Mark, that's consistent with what we said before, correct? It is consistent. And again, it was tied to the completion of the state road um, improvements in the state road bridge and the ramps. Uh, and as Mr. Russell indicated, there have been some uh, impacts on uh, all aspects of society as we know that. So it's very hard for me to sit here and think that we wouldn't have delays given what we're all up against right now with COVID-19. Um, Mr. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I, I had a question. Okay. Uh, let me acknowledge Mr. Weaver first because he hasn't got a chance. Uh, <laughs> uh, for Mr. Stanley, is there a legal definition of negotiate in good faith? Or is that more of a general kind of fuzzy term? <laughs> I know you lawyers, attorneys like to use words very precisely. <laughs> um, what, what we are saying, uh, Mr. Weaver, is that we are committed, one, to make the payments we've made, and two, to initiate discussions. Um, and you, you could characterize uh, discussions of, you know, we will pay you a nickel uh, versus we will pay you uh, a larger sum of money. Uh, and good faith negotiations are, is both parties are coming to the table looking at um, the facts currently in front of them uh, and dealing with each other at arm's length. Um, that's our commitment to the township. I think it is evidenced uh, by all um, commitments we've made, some of which uh, were mentioned by your manager up front with respect to some of the other benefits. Um, we potentially were looking at, you know, potentially a 10-year agreement at 85,000. Uh, our thought was to get the uh, more money to the township over a five-year term. Um, we will be a community partner as we move forward. Um, and you have uh, Penn State Health's commitment uh, to discuss this uh, prior to the expiration as to a continuation uh, of those arrangements. Uh, but what we're looking at is simply, you know, the facts will change. As Mr. Wigglesworth said, the board may change. Um, and the good faith that we will be demonstrating, uh, we just assume and trust that uh, the, uh, the board, the then board and the township will demonstrate that same good faith. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I would also point out that, as I understand it, that this first payment will be made six months from the date of execution of this agreement. Is that correct? The first payment would be made six months after the issuance of the certificate of use and occupancy. The building permit fee will be paid up front as part of the initial permit, uh, but the community impacts um, and the, the community benefits agreement, uh, that payment will be made six months after the hospital opens when the township could experience some of the impacts of a project as they move forward. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's when the would start too for the five year period. Okay, I understand that better. That's great. Thank you. Now, that's more a question back to Mr. Stanley. And that's, and that was when the, the five year clock will start at that point. Correct. The six months we make that payment and then we make uh, annual payments thereafter uh, for the five year term. Thank you. So um, just to clarify, I don't know that I heard the answer to um, Mr. Brown's <coughs> answer asking about your six, seven, and eight. Was that a no? Um, 
Mr. Wigglesworth, it is a no. We, we can't look into the future. Um, we've committed to discuss this with you. As I said, we trust that the good faith will also be uh, coming from the township at that point in time also. And there's no willingness to even commit to a donation period of some sort, re recognition that there will be a donation of some sort. Mr. Wigglesworth, I think anything that I say at this point in time potentially would demonstrate bad faith if I say there'll be a contribution, then we'll get into discussions as to what type of contribution, the dollar amount of the contribution. Um, and so our request is the five-year term, $170,000 per year uh, with the uh, commitment from Penn State Health as a community partner at that time uh, to discuss future payments with the township. Okay, well then my second question, I'm, I'm fine with the motion to grant the um, extension. Is there a rush or an urgent need if we're looking um, after we pass that motion um, to approve these other two motions? Um, is this something that we can table and um, have some discussion on um, in working groups and get back to you at our next meeting or the meeting after? Our request that this is considered as a package and the board act on it tonight. So uh, Alan and Todd are in a position to go back to the Penn State board uh, and let them know that these components are behind us uh, and they can move forward with the future planning for the hospital. Members of the board, I am willing to proceed with the three motions this evening. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lefebvre. It is. Okay, more discussion from the board. Meanwhile, if there's anybody from the audience that wants to comment, please just start filling out the chat form and we will read the comments as they come in. Any more discussion of the board? Okay, we do have three motions before us and I will read all three motions and we'll then take them at one at a time. Uh, the simplest of the three motions is to approve Penn State Health's request for a one year extension to the 180 day period to commence construction as set forth in the uniform construction code. Second motion is to approve setting a building permit fee for Penn State Hospital Medical Building and Parking Garage at $750,000. Third motion is to approve acceptance of a community support contribution from Penn State Health in the amount of $170,000 per year for the next five years with a condition to negotiate in good faith prior to the expiration of the five-year period to establish future contributions to the township. The community support contribution shall be formalized in a written agreement and it's contingent upon review and approval of the township solicitor. So those are the uh, three motions before us and I've got more discussion or we can move forward to tackling each of the three motions. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Weaver. Uh, thank you. Um, I would tend to support all three motions, but I, I mean, I'm willing to discuss Further, if any of the other supervisors would like to do that, but um, otherwise, I also support all three motions. Okay, we did get a question here: is what is Penn State? Uh, what we're talking about is a Penn State medical uh, hospital that's proposed on State Road right now. That was just what popped up on chat. Mr. Russell, I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm just reading what popped up on chat. <laughs> okay. So we had a, a, a statement from Mr. Hughes, what is Penn State? And I answered it, it's the hospital on State Road that proposed. Okay, well then I will, we have three motions before us. Why don't we tackle the first motion? The first motion is to approve Penn State Health's request for a one-year extension to the 180-day period 
to commence construction as set forth in the Uniform Construction Code. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Bennett. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Weaver. Mrs. Schweitzer, please roll call. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Lefevre. Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. Okay, so the ayes have it five nothing. Next motion is to approve setting the building permit fee for Penn State Hospital Medical Office Building and Parking Garage at $750,000. Do I have a motion? So moved. Yeah. Okay, motion for Mr. Bennett, second for Mr. Weaver. Ms. Schweitzer, second. please roll, roll call the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. <clears throat> Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. So I have it five, nothing. Last motion is to approve acceptance of a community support contribution from Penn State Health in the amount of $170,000 per year for the next five years with a condition to negotiate in good faith prior to the expiration of the five-year period to establish future contributions to the township. The community support contribution shall be formalized in a written agreement and is contingent upon review and approval of the township solicitor and the township. So, so do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Lefevre. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Bennett. Mrs. Schweitzer, please roll call the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? And I am an aye. I just will go on the record saying it's been a pleasure working with Penn State. And up to this point, they have shown good faith. And I look forward to a good faith discussion in five years. I, as a member of the board, am willing to commit to stick around through the ex rest of the project to see that we can facilitate the agreement. Mr. Lefebvre, I hope that you are around in five years to help assist us with that. You're uh, beard non-withstanding at this point, so thank you. Okay, so with that, we will now move on. I need to flip on my agenda back up on the screen. Mr. Chairman, you do have a comment or a ch in the chat room or a statement or question. What is Penn State's share in building the wetlands and are they responsible for upkeep? It seems it's being done to alleviate the necessity for a retention pond and or other runoff control. Um, I, I can let Penn State answer, I can answer that, but maybe we'll let Penn State answer or Mr. O'Brien answer that question, so. Yeah, I, uh, for, for the record, the, the stormwater, um, I call it the storm or the stream restoration project or floodplain restoration project um, is done in a way to create much cleaner downstream water than there is now. Uh, it takes out legacy soil. Um, it does have less on-site retention facilities, but the, um, but the area that encompasses the current floodplain uh, will serve for both storage flow or volume control, uh, rate control, and sediment control uh, as a uh, total project. Uh, this uh, particular project uh, is similar to what we did at Brubaker Run and um, has been that particular project was applauded for uh, it doing just what I said, which was to uh, control all three and to create a much cleaner uh, discharge for the Chesapeake Bay, which is uh, the uh, actually a requirement of the township through the MS4 requirements. Um, and by meeting these requirements, uh, the township in turn is saving um, close to $2 million in, um, in costs to replicate that same kind of result in uh, other streams in the township. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brian. You're welcome. Okay, next up on our agenda, we have Village Zone Ordinance Amendments. Um, I don't know 
Mr. Beck, if you're ready to talk about that, please. Thank you, Mr. Russell. Um, gentlemen, before you tonight is simply an acknowledgement of the village residential zone amendment and the village center zone ordinance amendment. Uh, staff is asking the board to acknowledge these two amendments and authorize staff to send these amendments on to the Township Planning Commission and the Lancaster County Planning Commission for review and recommendation. Okay. So this is a routine motion that has no debate or discussion because that's actually for the Planning Commission to talk about at this point. Um, so the motion is for this first motion is to acknowledge the proposed village residential zone and village commercial zone ordinance amendment and to authorize staff to send these ordinance amendments to the East Hemphill Township Planning Commission and the Lancaster County Planning Commission for review and recommendation to the township. So I will entertain a motion. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Weaver. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Mr. Wigglesworth. Mrs. Schweitzer, please roll call of the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. The ayes have it for five nothing. Uh, we did have another comment from Mr. Hughes pop up about Mr. O'Brien's response, and he basically said he did not answer the question. Um, basically, the one part of the question that was not answered, uh, I think Mr. O'Brien did a very good job of presenting what it was, the maintenance of the facilities are main, being maintained by the owner, not by the township. I believe that answers your question, Mr. Hughes. So with that, we will move on to the next item on our agenda, the retaining wall ordinance authorization to advertise for possible adoption at the June 17th, 2020 meeting. Um, or did you pop off into there? Um, I think, well, Mr. Schweitzer, you wanna run with that. <laughs> Looks like we- uh, John's still we're, here. We're, I lost, where is John? I'm not Mr. seeing John's him on the screen. Yep. I, I see you. I, I heard everything. And uh, okay, there you are. Uh, the retaining wall ordinance. Um, due to COVID, there were some um, delays, but the board um, acknowledged this recent um, zoning ordinance amendment back the first meeting in March. Um, it was introduced to the Township Planning Commission at their first meeting in April, but due to, um, I'm sorry, back in March, um, but due to COVID, there was no planning commission meeting in April. Um, it is going before the county planning commission on Monday the 11th, and we will have it on the um, planning commission agenda for their May 13th meeting. So um, staff is simply asking for the board to authorize staff to advertise this ordinance for a possible adoption at the June 17th meeting. So any discussion of the board at this point, this is simply to advertise the ordinance amendment, which will be discussed at a later meeting. Okay, seeing none. The motion is to authorize staff to advertise the retaining wall ordinance amendment as discussed. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Lefevre, do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Bennett. All in favor. Um, Mrs. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Lefevre. Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth. Mr. Wigglesworth. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. So the ayes have it five nothing. Okay, next up uh, is some good news. Uh, cooperation agreements between us and East Peak Borough. Um, and the first thing is the employee service sharing agreement between the Town of East Hempfield and the Borough East Petersburg Emergency Service Coordinator Resolution 2020-21. 
Uh, Mrs. Schweitzer, I'll turn it over to you. And then maybe if Ms. Scarborough wants to speak too, that would be great. We've been working at this for over a year. Uh, East Pete recently just adopted it. It's been modified uh, quite a few times, uh, but they are in agreement. We do have a signed document and it's ready for board action. It does create a working relationship between East Pete and East Hempfield for the services of Diane Garber, who's our emergency services coordinator. Okay. Ms. Garber, would you like to offer anything at this point? I really don't have anything to say other than yay. <laughs> I, 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 it's sad to say it takes a pandemic to really see a person's worth, but you are doing an outstanding job uh, helping the town. Absolutely. Getting everything right now and putting a game plan together that we have. And uh, this agreement can't be executed soon enough at this point. Thank uh, you. Anything from our public safety working group that they wish to offer since they were part of the negotiations? I'd like to thank. Um, Mrs. Garb and Mrs. Schweitzer did a lot of work uh, to make this happen. Um, it's tough enough sometimes for us to all come to agreement on something and let alone another board and another manager. So a lot of work, a lot of patience. Um, and in the end, um, I think a lot of good will come of it. Agreed. Thank you, Mr. Wigglesworth. Okay. So seeing no comments, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2020-21, adopting an employee service sharing agreement between East Hempfield Township and East Petersburg Borough. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Wigglesworth. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Lefevre. Mrs. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. So the ayes have it five nothing. Congratulations, Ms. Scarber. And job well done. <laughs> Next up is an intermissible cooperation agreement between the township of East Hempfield and the borough of East Petersburg, creating the Hempfield Area Fire Service Commission Resolution 2020 22. Ms. Schweitzer. Another one, long time coming. We had started this project with a study done by Rob, uh, help me. Bailey. Thank you. Uh, who was an expert in fire services. We got buy-in from all the fire companies. Our last effort here has been with East Pete Borough, which they have agreed to. We have a signed document. It does create the Hemfield Area Recreation, uh, <laughs> Hemfield Area Fire Services Commission which is a brand new commission. Uh, we are going to be looking for a one um, at-large member for this commission. And their first order of business will be the hiring of a fire official. And Ms. Garber, you have anything you would like to add, please? I am excited to see that we have finally been able to create an agreement that both municipalities can agree on. I know our fire companies are anxious for this to get moving forward and are already working on um, the process for them to designate their members. Um, they, along with East Pete Borough, have asked for a little bit of direction as far as some type of description of what the membership of the committee should look like so that as they ask for participation in the commission, um, they can give a description to those people. So I'm working on that now, but I'm excited for this commission to get up and running and moving forward so that we can continue to support our emergency services. They certainly are doing an incredible job right now um, meeting the needs of our community. There have been a lot of structure fires lately, so I guess with people being home a little bit more, there's a lot more going on in some of the houses right now. So. Okay, anybody, anything from our public safety working group? You guys have also been participating in this development for over a year now. Just, just a positive move toward something that we believe is gonna be very beneficial to both municipalities. <clears throat> I, I would just like to applaud the, the work of the public safety group. That, uh, it's been quite trying to uh, get this over the finish line and uh, you all, you get a tremendous amount of credit. I appreciate the work that you did on this project. 
Mm -hmm. I'll ladder that praise off to Mrs. Schweitzer and Mrs. Garber. Thank you. Okay. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adopt resolution 2022, adopting the agreement between East Hemphill Township and East Petersburg Borough to establish the Hemphill Area Fire Services Program and Hemphill Area Fire Services Commission. So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Lefevre. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wigglesworth. Mrs. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver? Aye. Mr. Bennett? Aye. Mr. Lefevre? Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth? Aye. Mr. Russell? Aye. So the ayes have it, five and nothing. <laughs> Next up on our agenda um, is a little bit of a sadder story. Uh, to talk about. Um, and we will be talking about Lieutenant Tammy Marsh and the request for the board to for a service disability pension effective May 1st, 2020, as a result of a service-related duty injury which occurred in 2004 and was re-aggravated in 2011. And on the medical advice of Lieutenant Marsh's doctor, Lieutenant Marsh is no longer able to perform the duties as a police officer. Her effective retirement from duty date will be April 30th, 2020. Um, I ha have known Lieutenant Marsh my whole time as a township supervisor for over the last 10 years now. Um, and I have found her to be a rock solid leader in the police department. Somebody I could talk to to get a pulse on what's going on. Very helpful on the pension board over the years that she's participated in that. And just a sounding board of common sense and dedication to the community and to the township. And I know this is a very hard decision for her to make. Um, this is not somebody that's looking for an easy out. This is somebody who has done everything possible to avoid this moment. Uh, but the injury has gotten to a point where she can no longer do the job. Um, so uh, Chief Skiles, if you would like to add anything to that, um, I just wanted to give a, a shout out to Lieutenant Marsh for the job that she's done to the township over the years and her just absolute dedication to policing in the township. Yeah, I think that Tammy is actually on here. I see her name up. I don't know if she can talk. Um, you might want to ask her to say something if she can, but I had provided you with, with her background and the syn uh, synopsis of her career. Uh, it's my opinion that she established credibility and professionalism in our investigative unit. And she greatly aided me over the last 10 years in raising the bar for accountability in the department. Um, I'd like to say that she was my right-hand man, my right-hand woman, um, and I was proud to serve with her as a member of the command staff. I appreciate her loyalty over the years, uh, loyalty to me and to the department. I think that we had a good respect for one another um, and we developed a, a solid relationship. So on a personal note, I'm sad to see her leave. Uh, but I also know that this is what she needs to do to have a, a better quality of life going forward. And, uh, you know, it's a new chapter for her, I think. And I, at some point in time, want to have a, a real send off for her. Uh, whatever it is that we can do as a township. I'm in the process of transferring over her duty weapon as a retirement gift. Uh, so I'll meet with her and, um, do the typical luncheon that we do. Uh, small token of appreciation that we'll have, but when we get past this COVID time. So again, I know she's on here. She may want to say some, something. If you unmute her, maybe she will. I believe Tammy, Lieutenant Marsh does want to speak. If you can unmute her or maybe she can, there she yeah. is. Okay, Listen, we're good. Lieutenant Marsh, I did unmute you. You can speak if you want. If you don't, I understand, so. Uh, no, as you all know, I always have something to say, so. Um, I really want to first thank uh, Chief Skiles. He has uh, <clears throat> been one of the finest leaders, but most of all, one of the best friends I could have had over the last 10 years. And I can't appreciate him more. And as a township, I know you all appreciate him as well. And you should, because he's one of the finest men and chief <clears throat> that really you could ask for in this township. Secondly, Cindy, you are one of the best women I have ever met and one of the finest leaders I could know. 
you are honest and fair as the day is long. And I have appreciated more than you can ever know working for you. So I wish you the best going forward. And to the board, some of you I've known for 10 years, some of you I've known for a little shorter, some maybe I don't know very much at all, but I wanna thank you for the best 23 years of my professional life. It has been an honor to, to be with East Hemfield Township and I have loved every single second of it. And I can tell you this is a little bittersweet to me. I loved what I did. I loved East Hemfield Township. And I think I was pretty good at what I did. Um, and I will miss it. And I will miss you all. And I wish everybody the best going forward. On my replacement, Matt Poley, is one of the finest men I have ever known. He is like a brother to me and he is infinitely qualified to lead and go forward, picking up right where I left off. So you guys are in great hands. Officer Sandman, one of the best officers I have ever known. So him becoming a Sergeant, I know his comes up after, uh, after my vote. Uh, you could not ask for a better individual to be a part of the command staff as a Sergeant. So I just want to say from me, thank you. So very much. I am humbled to have worked for y'all. It's a little sad for me. My family thanks you. Uh, you have provided myself, my family with just a wonderful opportunity. So thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Parsha, I don't know what more we could say at this point. Um, you are the definition of a public servant and I do look forward and hope at some point you will uh, allow us to celebrate your retirement in a much better way than doing it on the Zoom meeting tonight, <laughs> which is not the proper way to send you off. Um, so when we are actually allowed to congregate more than 10 people in a room, I look forward to us having a, a good send off for you um, and celebrate your career and your time here at East Enfield. I don't know if any other board members want to chime in. I'm not dominating the stage at this point. Here, here. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll get on to the business here. So the motion is with regrets to grant Lieutenant Tammy Marsh a service disability pension effective May 1st, 2020. Do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, motion for Mr. Bennett. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Wigglesworth. In this one, we will not need a roll call vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, Ms. Marsh, you have our deepest sympathy for why you need this um, pension, and you have our best wishes going forward as you engage a new stage of your life and a new career outside of policing. So our best wishes, and we look forward again to joining you someday in the future for a proper send-off. Thank you. Thank you all, I appreciate it very much. Okay, we will move on to the next item of our agenda, which uh, Lieutenant Marsh had opened up with, and that is a request to approve the promotion to Sergeant of Officer Joshua Sandman. So Chief, if you would kick us off, please. Yeah, as you can see from the, the uh, bio that I sent you um, in, in an email, it's attached to your agenda. Officer Sandman is a very experienced, very trained officer. Um, he, this is the third department he's worked for. Um, we're lucky to get him. I think our, our gain um, over the years has really paid off. And we brought him in and, and uh, sent him to some training and he kind of took off. Uh, Tammy made a good comment. He's, he's uh, one of the best officers that we have and I would love to be able to clone him. And uh, it's going to be his job to clone his subordinates to uh, perform the way he does. So I think highly of his skill set, and I trust that he'll be a valued member of our leadership team going forward. And I'm very excited for his next steps in his career. And I look close or I look um, happy to work with him in the future. And I just welcome the opportunity for him as well as for me. Thank you, Chief. I have to go back in the records. Um, I think I was actually the one that made the motion 10 years ago to hire him. 
Uh, so that, that that will have been one of my first one of my first motions as a uh, new supervisor in the township. So any other discussion of the board? I think he's on here too as well. Uh, I think I saw his name on there. Uh, yes, he is. If he, I will unmute him. If he would like to speak, you may. If not, I understand. Well, Mr. Russell, I didn't know that uh, you were the one that made the motion for me, but I'm very appreciative. I was uh, grateful to get the opportunity, and I'm very grateful for the opportunities I've been um, afforded through the department. And I look forward to continue serving in this new role. Thank you. Any discussion of the board? Just like to say that we uh, definitely do need to make an official celebration um, for Lieutenant Marsh and for Sergeant Sandman uh, when the time is right. So I know Chief said we won't forget about it. I know he won't let us, but uh, make sure we make a commitment to do that. I agree. Any other discussion? Okay, the chairman will make the motion. Just once I pull up my motion form here. Motion is to promote Officer Joshua Sandman to the rank of Sergeant. Is there a second? Second. Okay, second for Mrs. Early Fever. Ms. Schweitzer, please pull the board. Mr. Weaver. Aye. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Mr. Bennett. Sorry about that. Mr. Lefevre. Aye. Mr. Wigglesworth. Aye. Mr. Russell. Aye. The ayes have it. Five nothing. Congratulations, Sergeant Salmon. So I'll be issuing him this. Um, and again, we'll we'll allow his family members to pin this on him going forward in the future. But um, hopefully we have no more virtual promotions or retirements so we can get back to work. <laughs> Amen to that. Okay, we have nothing showing up for old business and unless somebody's got something pressing, uh, we're gonna move on from there. I just ask one quick question, please. Yes, Mr. Bennett. Uh, anything new in the tax uh, payment relief? I didn't see it on in the manager report. Have we learned anything from the county? No, we have not. We have not heard anything. We submitted it to them, um, but what they're doing with it, I'm not sure. I think they're still gathering the municipalities together. Yeah, uh, my the I'll put my LCAT's hat on for a second. Um, I I got a feeling it sounds like now that some misconceptions have been eliminated, that we'll probably see um, something going to the county commissioners in about a month. Um, so it looks like there's going to be a hundred percent participation of the uh, municipalities from what I'm hearing. I've not heard of any no's at this point. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other old business? Okay, seeing none, we have nothing showing up for new business. Is there anything pressing that needs to be added to new business? Otherwise, we'll add to next meeting's agenda. Okay, seeing none, Ms. Schweitzer, manager's report. I got a copy of my manager's report. I do have a couple of additions uh, that I wanted to note. On item number three, the Old Warriors Town Road Bridge, I'm happy again to announce, we have lots of happy things to happen tonight, that DEP has issued their permit, which is another milestone in this project. Army Corps did their permit process last month, and we have DEPs actually issued as of today. The uh, state road project, we had a meeting this afternoon um, regarding their new timetable. Their switch from one east side to the west side is now scheduled for mid-July, as opposed to uh, Memorial Day weekend. So that's a change. And also they did change the uh, project completion, which is now scheduled for August the 24th of 2021. They were 148 days behind schedule, but because they work through the winter, they are now 82 days behind schedule. So that includes the COVID uh, break. So they are currently now 82 days behind schedule. 
their new completion date is August 24, 2021. And we should see the switch becoming happening in July. Uh, there is good news there. Yeah. Uh, the um, other thing, there's two new items I'd like to add to my manager's report. Something not quite as happy, our administrative buildings generator is unrepairable. Uh, we had hoped that we could uh, find a replacement parts, but it's that old, it's the original uh, unit from 1982. That's probably gonna be a $31,000 uh, budget item. We have to move forward and get that ordered. It's a four month lead time. What we're going to be using is the um, building maintenance fund, which has funding in it. We were counting on that as part of uh, Mr. Robinson's uh, financial picture to have a $30,000 savings in that, that line item. So we're going to have to spend that to get that uh, back up and running. So it's 24,000 for the actual generator and about $6,000 for electrical work that needs to happen. And they are co-stars, so we'll move forward and get that ordered. Right now we have extension cords running just in case. So that's what's gonna happen for four months. While we're doing this, should we look to the future for sizing that possibly we should increase the size of this equipment? We have three generators, uh, one for the police department, one for the building um, maintenance department, and then the admin building. So it's probably size enough, but I'll let Perry address that if he... If he... Uh, yes, we, we did look at um, the size of the generator. And when, when we moved everything from the police department off of that old generator, it did give us some capacity, which allowed us to add the entire um, upstairs of the admin side to that. Uh, there's no real gen or, uh, big generators of electricity in the admin side, mostly computers and lights. So um, it is an 80K uh, generator and it'll give us more than what we need. Um, Thank you. That's good. These are natural gas too, right? Yeah. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Well, that's why we have a building maintenance fund. <laughs> Stuff breaks. <laughs> We, we did look, in earnest, we did look very hard for replacement parts, but um, they're, they're just not made anymore, so. The last item I wanted to add to the uh, manager's report is the refi of the police loan. Uh, we hadn't heard anything from uh, Scott Kramer for quite some time, and he was having difficulty dealing with the banks. So TB, TD Bank, who we had gotten the loan from, uh, backed off and, and got very conservative with everything that's going on. He has reached out to uh, FNB, who is our bank that we deal with on our accounts, and found a very promising rate of uh, 2.15. So he's moving forward on that to 25 to 30K savings per year. We're anticipating a June 30 settlement date. You'll see on your agenda next meeting uh, documentation that needs to occur to make that happen. And I just want to thank Ms. Schweitzer. Uh, that was something that the finance working group was working with her and Mr. Robinson on, and it's another way to save some money and kind of helping us out with that generator cost right okay. now. <laughs> so that's all I have for my report, unless there's questions. Do you want to just give a quick update on uh, the green, amber, yellow, and the restart of the township? And just a, a big picture viewpoint right now, you and Mrs. Barber. Putting you in the spot, but. Um, well, <laughs> we're not quite sure when yellow will happen. We're still in red. Uh, we're one of the counties that uh, uh, is struggling. The position of the township at this point is we are waiting for yellow. Uh, we have um, held back as much as we could in terms of bringing people back into the office, creating full-time schedules. We are still on rotating schedules and team approaches as opposed to bringing everybody in. And as Mr. Russell mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, uh, one of our local townships has been hit with a, a, a COVID case and therefore is down for the count and is in quarantine. So this is something we would definitely want to be avoiding. I don't know, Diane, you have more of the details in terms of the governor's plans, if you wanna share anything. 
in addition. I would just echo what Cindy has said. We are watching very closely as the guidelines come out um, and doing our best to ensure that we are maintaining the health and safety of all of the township staff. Um, I think that our staff is doing an incredible job right now of providing all of our services remotely and or on site as needed public works in the police department and the golf course as well. So um, we continue to focus on two things, maintaining the services that we need to provide and ensuring the health and well-being of our staff. And um, Cindy has been a great proponent of that and we continue to update and adjust plans and processes and procedures as needed. And um, I think we are solidly placed as we move forward to um, have some rotating processes in place to allow our workforce to start to return once we move to yellow. Um, and we are looking ahead at that and also recognizing that there are some um, some emotions that will come along with that as well um, after being out of the office for um, eight plus weeks we have all changed a little bit and learned some things and done some things differently and so um, we're looking forward to starting to get back into the office but we continue to hold off until we get to a point where we're assured that uh. we'll be putting ourselves and our staff at risk. Thank you, Mr. Garber. One of our goals was to, in 2020 is to possibly start recording meetings with video. So here we are. <laughs> Not the way we wanted to plan it though, uh, but we are now doing things a lot differently in the way we uh, operate in the past. And I think it's gonna be some permanent changes that come to the workforce out of this, like there every time we have a major market correction or a major change in direction. And that's definitely what we have right now. I, again, appreciate the, the job the staff is doing to keep the office fully operating um, and to be doing the socially distancing as much as possible and practical at this point, but still provide full services. So hats off to everybody for the job they're doing, especially the police uh, as they're uh, dealing with the public and now our golf course as they're too dealing with the public. So. Uh, everybody's doing a very good job. So, Ms. Switzer, do you have anything more for your manager's report? I do not. Okay. We are now entering into the public comment. I have been monitoring the chat group. I'm not seeing anything. I will give a one-minute pause if somebody has something that they want to type to talk about uh, for a non-agenda item. This would be the time to do it. Mr. Chairman, I did have a couple questions for the manager. Okay, Mr. Go ahead, Mr. Rosewood. That will allow somebody to type if they want to. Great. Um, just checking on the trail costs for Aher Park. I saw that when you sent it out, it looked like um, Mr. Madonna was putting or trying to get some numbers together. Did we make any progress on that? I have not received any. I know he's working at it. Um, any insight there on that, Perry? Um, try, got some measurements on it. I'm trying to put some prices together on it. There are some outstanding questions that I need to speak to Ms. Schweitzer about. Uh, regarding the material to be used. So um, I, I should have that within the next week. Okay, great. Um, second, um, I received an email um, just to highlight from Representative Miller in reference to a motion or a um, an action taken by uh, West Hemfield Township, um, a resolution um, that they were considering to adopt uh, basically um, asking the governor to reopen Lancaster County. Um, and I would just ask if you get a chance, if you could review that, um, maybe send it out to, I'll send you a copy of what I have. Mm -hmm. And it's something worthwhile that the board might want to take up the next meeting. Um, I don't want to get into the whole, to all of it here right now, but uh, it's a worthwhile read. And then uh, finally just had a question about um, board group reports or just maybe making a, an acknowledgement that uh, the Stormwater Committee met on April 24th and Planning Committee met on April 30th to discuss a variety of uh, items related to stormwater and planning. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Rigglesworth. Uh, can I make a comment also? Yes, can, Mr. Bennett. Uh, sort of dovetailing what Scott was saying about opening up Lancaster County. Um, 
from an emergency declaration standpoint. Uh, I don't, we don't need to get into it now, but perhaps at our next meeting, uh, the staff sort of lay out what the criteria will be uh, to suspend the emergency declaration uh, and end it. Uh, right now it's an open-ended uh, declaration that could go on forever, but I think it would give us you know, a good idea of where we need to be when that happens. Um, I'm one that believes that uh, we sort of need to get things opened up here again, uh, even, even from a meeting standpoint. Uh, these Zoom meetings are, are nice, but really um, I feel a lot better about them and about communicating with the community in general uh, if we uh, were able to do it live. And I, I recognize the challenge challenges that will come with that, but uh, for what it's worth, the sooner we can get back to an open meeting of some type, I think the better. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Mr. Bennett. Okay, any other comments from the board? I see nothing on the public comment side. So with that, we will adjourn our meeting at 8.16 p.m. I'm going to turn the record button off and wish everybody a good night. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Scott.